four stages of fire. In order to get a fire under control, a firefighting team will conduct a short risk assessment. When dealing with a flame, it is essential to know the different stages of fire. Recognizing the developmental stage of the fire will help the firefighters choose an appropriate tactic for extinguishing the flame. The four stages of a fire are incipient stage, growth stage, fully developed stage and decay stage. These stages are taught to firefighters so they can identify what stage a fire is at. Once the firefighters have accessed the stage the fire is at, they can respond accordingly. Depending on the stage that the fire is in, firefighters can assess what the fire is likely to do and how it is likely to progress. How much risk it poses to firefighters and civilians? What is the best way to extinguish the fire? The incipient stage that is ignition has occurred but there has been no spread. In growth stage, fire is self-sustaining and after a rapid rise in flash point, a fully developed stage of fire will happen. Fire is at its hottest point, burning all its available fuels in its vicinity. And the final stage is decay stage, that is the fire is running out of fuel but it is still very dangerous, then this is the longest stage. Why is it required to know about stages of fire? It is required to find most effective extinguishing method to minimize risk to firefighting personnel to predict the progression of the fire. As we seen earlier, the four stages of fire are incipient stage, growth stage, fully developed stage and decay stage. Incipient stage. The first stage begins when heat, oxygen and a few fuel source combine and have a chemical reaction resulting in fire. This is also known as ignition and is usually represented by a very small fire which often and hopefully goes out of on its own before the other stages are reached. Recognizing a fire in this stage provides your best chance at suppression or escape. An incipient fire is a flame that is still in its beginning stage. Fire in this initial stage can be extinguished or controlled by portable firefighting equipment. Any fire that has progressed to a point where visibility has been compromised by smoke or structuring firefighting is required, can no longer be called an incipient fire. An incipient fire can be defined by the following factors. Flames that are small and are not widespread. Smoke allows visibility in the room. The heat emitted from the flame is low in comparison with later stages. How to identify incipient stage? The incipient stage of a fire is the stage immediately after ignition. The fire has just begun. It can be identified by factors such as the fire has not affected anything beyond its immediate vicinity. Smoke has not reduced visibility in the vicinity. People in the vicinity can still breathe. People in the area can still escape without too much trouble. The heat of the fire is relatively low. The smoke alarm sounds. Growth stage. The growth stage is where the structures, fire load and oxygen are used as fuel for the fire. There are numerous factors affecting the growth stage including where the fire started, what combustibles are near it, ceiling height and the potential for thermal layering. It is during the shortest of the four stages when a deadly flashover can occur, potentially trapping, injuring or killing firefighters. As we move through the phases of fire, we come to the second stage that is the growth stage. The growth of a fire will be affected mainly by the structure of the building and the fuel available. The growth phases are characterized by the following indicators. There are sufficient oxygen and fuel to support the ongoing growth of the flame, a defined layer of smoke above the flame, the temperature in the room increases, 
condensation disappears from windows brown stains on window glass may appear and cracks in windows how to identify growth stage there are certain ways to identify that a fire is in its growth stage which includes a plume or layer of smoke is visible above the fire if indoors smoke may now be accumulating in the top two feet of the room you can feel the room's temperature has increased windows start to turn brown around the edges and may be cracking you can no longer see any condensation on windows between growth and fully developed stage the sudden involvement of a room or an area in flames from floor to ceiling caused by thermal radiation feedback thermal radiation feedback is the energy of the fire being radiated back to the contents of the room from the walls floor and ceiling the growth stage often ends when a flashover occurs a flashover is a moment in a fire's life where it has generated so much heat usually around 1150 degrees fahrenheit that the fuels in the fire's vicinity catch fire spontaneously during a flashover you will often see a flash where the fire spreads extraordinarily quickly engulfing an entire room almost instantly the flashover is incredibly dangerous and can trap and burn people and firefighters in the home it is between the growth and the fully developed stages of fire when a flashover occurs a flashover can be defined as the near simultaneous ignition of the most of the directly exposed combustible material in an enclosed area fully developed stage when the growth stage has reached its max and all combustible materials have been ignited a fire is considered fully developed this is the hottest phase of a fire and the most dangerous for anybody trapped within after the flashover the fire reaches the fully developed stage out of all the stages of fire uh, this phase is where energy release is at its greatest the temperature will be at its highest point generally somewhere between 700 degrees to 1200 degrees celsius fully developed fires can be identified by the following factors darkened or black smoke dense smoke substantial heat blackened window glazing visible exterior flames flames obscured by smoke and the final stage is decay stage to study the longest stage of a fire the decay stage is characterized as a significant decrease in oxygen or fuel putting an end to the fire two common dangers during this stage are first the existence of non flaming combustibles which can potentially start a new fire if not fully extinguished second there is the danger of a back draft when oxygen is reintroduced to a volatile confined space during the final stages of fire a flame will enter the decay phase this stage occurs after the fully developed flame starts to run out of fuel or oxygen fires can be forced into the decay stage by reducing oxygen supply with firefighting equipment limiting the flame to one compartment or area will help to contain the available fuel and growth of the fire it is a critical during this phase to limit the fire's access to combustible material and oxygen even if a fire appears to be out there is a chance of reignition when the right materials are available prevention to make sure your employees have the ability to combat the early stages of fire make sure you maintain your fire protection equipment appropriately conclusion fires go through four key stages a firefighter will often assess the stage a fire is at when they arrive at a fire so they are aware of the likely behavior of the fire and how best to extinguish or contain the fire however every stage of the fire is very dangerous human safety is paramount which is why trained firefighters are the best people to the to be present during a fire